If you're struggling with tinnitus and looking for effective ways to manage it, I want you to watch this whole video because I've laid out six expert strategies to help you manage your condition. Three of them focus on what to do during daytime hours that affect concentration and attention, and three of them are focused on nighttime or falling asleep to make sure you have deep and restful sleep regardless of how loud your tinnitus is that night. My name is Dr. Ben Thompson, audiologist and tinnitus specialist. You are here on my YouTube channel. I encourage you to go to tinnitusquiz.com if you are looking for how to get started and find effective strategies for relief for your tinnitus. But right now, let's go ahead and start the video. All right, now the fun stuff. The topics we'll cover. An introduction to the six expert strategies, defining recovery for tinnitus, exactly what does that mean? An explanation of the six expert strategies, three to help during the day, three to help at night, and then finally, tinnitus treatment data from Treble Health. Please make sure that you've been medically evaluated by an ENT doctor. Know that reduction of tinnitus does not happen overnight. It's a slow, ongoing process, but trust me, this is the this is what we need to learn. We do hope to provide some level of relief as soon as possible, but most people need more than 90 days to reach their end goal, okay? And no treatment protocol for any tinnitus treatment or other medical treatment has a 100% success rate. So we're going to do absolutely everything we can, although you should know what a realistic outcome is for any health condition. Okay, so who is Treble Health? As I said earlier on the call, there's three of us here from Treble. We're a specialty clinic for tinnitus. Our mission is to help you live a full and productive life with tinnitus. There's 25 million Americans who have bothersome tinnitus, and we believe that it's unacceptable that they're receiving subpar treatments and care. Our goal is to change that. In 2022, we helped over 3,000 individuals like you manage their tinnitus. Let me know in the chat, have you heard this from any doctors before? Try to just forget about the tinnitus. There's no cure. You'll have to live with it. Just learn to live with it. There's nothing you can do for tinnitus, right? If you've ever been told that, want to acknowledge that this isn't true, right? This isn't true. You don't just have to learn to live with it. There's strategies where your brain can reduce tinnitus over time so that the tinnitus you're living with gets better and better and lower and lower, okay? That's completely different than just learn to live with it. There's no cure. Well, there is no medication or surgery for 99% of tinnitus. However, there are treatments and therapies which will change someone's life. Try to forget about it. That's easier said than done. You could try hearing aids. Yes, that's true, but let's give more specifics around what that means. And there's absolutely tangible things that can help you. So we're, we've heard that before. We're with you. We know that experience and how hard it is. Some of you have heard about Randy's story before. We like to highlight it because it touches on a lot of important points that many of you can relate to and especially for this class for the day and night relief. Is it possible to get better? Yes. Let's go through Randy's story. So he had mild tinnitus for many years, and then last March, about a year ago, it spiked to an 8 out of 10 constant tinnitus in both ears. Because of that, he developed significant sleep problems. He couldn't sleep. He had this loud sound in his head when he was trying to fall asleep. During the day was a struggle as well. He had to take time off work. He went to his doctor and was prescribed some medication to try to help things get on the right path. He had never tried tinnitus maskers, sound therapy, hearing aids, or anything before. He frankly didn't feel like he needed it. But then when this developed into this louder tinnitus, it became a real problem, a very big problem, as was measured by the TFI, the questionnaire that measures tinnitus from zero to 100. So it was an 87 out of 100. That's a very big problem on that scale. So he used these day and night strategies that we're talking about. And between March and August, tinnitus, his levels went from a very big problem, 87 out of 100, all the way down to a three out of 100, or not a problem. So what did he do? How did this happen? That's what we're going to discuss today. Those are covering these day and night strategies. You know, over that period of time, which for him was less than six months, he had moments where he didn't notice the tinnitus at all, okay? So there's absolutely things we can do for tinnitus. And Randy's case is a great example of, of the dramatic changes that the brain can produce when the right system is in place and the right approach is taken. Three of the most common causes of tinnitus are cochlear. This is the hearing organ in the inner ear. Stress-induced, this is neurological pressure on the system that can create this ringing sound. And somatosensory, this is physical issues like neck, jaw, or posture, TMJ. When I say jaw, I mean TMJ. So there are differences between these and a targeted treatment and 
a targeted approach would make sure to understand what is the cause or multiple causes and provide tailored treatment to that. That's, of course, what we do and what any good tinnitus doctor should do. But there's also this underlying truth that all these causes generally lead to nerve activity in the brain that's interpreted as the sound of tinnitus. So understanding the brain and how tinnitus is present is a foundational key to learning how you can reverse engineer this system, use the brain and the different inputs that are available to make tinnitus less, to improve the condition. Okay, so in the bottom left, you see the cochlea. This is the, the ear, the hearing organ. There's different parts of the brain. You don't need to know all of this, so don't be overwhelmed by this image. It's designed to show you how tinnitus is not just an ear condition, it's also a brain condition. There's no permanent damage in your brain from this tinnitus. It can reverse and change and improve over time. This is a short interruption from today's video to announce the tinnitus quiz. If you're watching this video, there's a good chance that you or someone you know has tinnitus. We know how much tinnitus can impact your daily life, and we're here to help. Visit tinnitusquiz.com and take a two-minute quiz to receive personalized treatment plans that have helped hundreds of people learn to manage their tinnitus. Start now at tinnitusquiz.com. In the bottom right here, you can see there's an image of what's called stereocilia, the little inner ear hair cells. And these cells are designed to pass auditory information through the nervous system, through the auditory nerve, up into the brain for us to hear sounds and make sense of it. Slight changes to these regions from age-related hearing loss, loud noise exposure, or other things in our past can create this low-level phantom sound in our brain that certain events or illnesses or medications or situations can bring that low-level brain buzz and that hum that phantom sound up to a loud blaring tinnitus or a high-pitched ringing tone. So there is a correlation like we had shown here with hearing in many cases, but it's not the only cause of tinnitus. We must not think of tinnitus as only an ear condition. Although the research and science clearly shows this, this relationship that for us to find relief for tinnitus, we have to consider the ear and the other common causes as well. This next uh, image shows the different brain regions and how it's not only the auditory cortex, the auditory brain that gets activated from tinnitus, but there's multiple brain regions that imaging of tinnitus patients have shown are hyperactive compared to the average adult. As I said earlier, the purpose here is to understand, well, what are these brain regions and how can I bring those hyperactive levels back to a more normal level? If we can do that consistently every day, every week, for a matter of weeks and months, we notice that our patients get better. We notice that the tinnitus levels come down. We notice that how much it bothers us, how much it affects our sleep, how much it affects our attention, our concentration, our stress, we notice how much that improves. So this is the indirect pathway that's so important to understand how do I get relief from tinnitus? Well, focusing on these indirect pathways, which we're going to talk about today, right? The, the two foundational pieces of a treatment. This is over our experience of seeing hundreds of patients every month, of studying for five or more years in a doctorate program in major cities and major hospitals and personally in California and others on our team in New York, et cetera, and having one-on-one -on -one conversations with many people who have gotten better and many people who are stuck or trying to get better, understanding the best protocols and the best treatments out there. The foundation that it all, that it all comes down to is personalized coaching and sound therapy. These are the most proven and successful methods that should be looked at as a foundational approach to, to having tinnitus relief. So if you can leave this web class with one thing, it's this screen here that the foundational treatment, if I'm, if I'm doing anything, I need to be doing at least some of this. So take, take that away tonight. I need to be at least doing some of this. So personalized coaching helps an individual who's struggling with tinnitus get out of the negative cycle. And I see in the chat here that many of you are in this negative cycle of anxiety and stress and tinnitus, having a lot of questions, not feeling like anyone's fully diagnosed your condition properly and given you a clear path of what you should do about it. You're not alone with that. It's a normal response for what you're going through. Just know that there is a way out. Okay. The negative cycle of tinnitus often starts by us noticing tinnitus, and then we develop this fear of it. What is it? Why is it there? Is it something in my head? Is it something wrong? 
start to feel anxious and worried, mental and physical stress starts to increase. And then the way that the fight or flight mechanism in the brain works is that it looks at tinnitus as a potential threat. So it puts more attention to it and then it can get louder, increased awareness of tinnitus. You can see there's this negative feedback loop, this negative cycle of tinnitus, how at no fault of your own, simply how the psychology in the ear works, that tinnitus can get louder and louder because of this negative cycle. So one-on-one -on -one coaching, personalized coaching is designed to get you out of that cycle, giving you the tools and techniques and support to break this loop and create some space there so the tinnitus can settle and we're living a full and productive life. That's the goal here with personalized coaching, and it, it does make a big difference. The other piece of this is sound therapy. So sound enters the ears, and it goes into the auditory brain, and it mixes with the tinnitus. So that source of the tinnitus, it is in the auditory brain. That's where we perceive it from. So it has to have some neurons, some brain signals in the auditory brain. Using sound, targeted sounds, which we'll go over today, following sound therapy as part of your treatment is something that almost everyone with tinnitus should do because when you use it effectively, it helps promote your brain's ability to reduce your tinnitus over time. So this retraining of your tinnitus, this retraining of your auditory brain is a big part of how you get better. And what we've seen and what the research supports in the last two or three years, this, this has been studied with new research coming out, that when you combine these methods, it leads to the best outcomes as opposed to just one of them on their own. Okay, so as I've laid that pretty extensively, I've laid that foundation, everything we're going to talk about tonight is going to be building up on top of that. Recovery for tinnitus, tinnitus treatment, tinnitus success, tinnitus relief, it's usually promoting this natural brain process called habituation. What this means is that your brain pays less attention, less focus, and is less bothered, and in most cases, and in most cases, tinnitus gets softer during this process. I'm going to ask Dr. Garrett here to, to join on in a moment as I attend to something. Garrett, how do you define habituation and relate it to other natural sounds like those that are mentioned here um, to your patients? Sure. So I usually do it by analogy. So, you know, there are certain sounds that we hear in the world, but we don't pay attention to. They don't carry a lot of meaning. Um, for example, your refrigerator makes some sound. The the motor and, and the fan in the refrigerator makes a low level of sound. Your computer makes a low level of sound, but your brain doesn't pay much attention to it. It's kind of pushed it into the background. It's deemed it not important. And that's our goal with tinnitus. Reduce the perception and reduce the emotional connection and, and energy and attention on it so that it can be pushed into the background similar to the sound of a refrigerator. Or say you move to a new house or apartment, there's a train that's nearby. At first it seems really loud, but after a few months you barely notice it. And then perhaps you have a friend come over for dinner and the train goes by and they jump, you barely even heard it because you've habituated to that sound. And how's, how's your mic? Thank you. So, so you know, I think what your comments there show us is that this is relatable. This is something that we experience in other parts of parts of our life. This is something that we can start to understand and say, okay, if those things are true for sounds that don't change at all, then maybe it is possible for me to not only habituate to my tinnitus, but the sound itself gets softer over time. And that's the perception of how loud is this tinnitus one to ten. Most of us who reach lit the stages of habituation here that I'm showing on the screen, most of us that get to stage four, which is this place where tinnitus is rarely noticed, we can quickly redirect our attention from it when we hear it. Most of us report during this process that the tinnitus is softer than what it was. And I've been surprised over the years, over and over, about how very loud or severe cases of tinnitus who've had it for a number of years have improved to the point of uh, lower levels, lower annoyance, and more habituation. So this is also another very important uh, diagram. And if anyone here knows where they are in the habituation stage, just wait one minute because we're going to ask a poll here. Stage one is when tinnitus is at its worst. It has the highest awareness and annoyance, frequent worrying and anxiety, often accompanied by loss of sleep and appetite. 
Stage two, things start to get a little better. There's periods of time where thinness is forgotten or reduced in volume. Slowly return to normal activities. Sleep and appetite may begin to improve. There's a bit more acceptance and less annoyance. These two stages, stage one and stage two, these are the most common for people to be in distress and to be seeking answers and to be really struggling with tinnitus. Stage three, there's periods, longer periods where tinnitus uh, isn't noticed. It's no longer causing emotional distress and you have spikes, they're shorter and less frequent. Stage four, tinnitus is rarely noticed, full emotional acceptance, no longer eliciting negative feelings or thoughts. So everyone who's in stage three, your primary goal is to keep your tinnitus sp spikes in check, keep your baseline levels, try to lower those baseline levels, and your primary objective is to get into stage four. That's what we wanna help you with. That's what we know is possible. If you're in stage two, your primary objective is to get into stage three, okay? If you're in stage one, your primary objective is just to get into stage two for now. This is an ongoing process, working with tinnitus, getting to stage four. It's a, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Sprinting may hurt us in the long run because we get tired out or frustrated, but consistency and focus and the right, the right care in place can absolutely get us to stage four. So don't lose hope. Even if it takes time, it's worth it. What's the alternative here? It is definitely worth it, okay? So for those of you who are new to this concept, just know that many of us um, who have in this group, who are here, who are struggling with tinnitus, have been working on this. And there's some, there's some expert recommendations and tips that can make it happen faster and easier. With a targeted treatment, you can induce habituation so that it happens more easily and it happens faster, okay? Those two fundamental tools that I spoke about earlier, sound therapy and personalized coaching, they're still very important. On top of the personalized coaching and the sound therapy, now we're going into the six expert strategies for tinnitus relief day and night. All right, this is why you're here. This is where it gets fun. So let's talk about strategy number one. This is to be used during the daytime. Perform one simple relaxation exercise per day to calm your central nervous system, okay? This doesn't mean you're nervous because you have a nervous system, we all do. This means that when we settle the mind and settle the body, this emotional brain gets a signal that the body and the mind are calm, the nervous system is at ease, therefore tinnitus does not need to be treated like a threat because I'm not under threat, I'm not under siege. So doing this one simple relaxation exercise, you can't force it, okay? Tinnitus can be exacerbated by stress and anxiety. So doing stress reduction techniques helps reduce tinnitus. Also, typical physical activity, walking, swimming, biking, that helps reduce stress, promote healthy hormone responses in the body, promotes relaxation, and helps for sleep. So try to do at least one of these that makes sense for you on a daily basis. Work it into your routine so that it's a proactive, preventative care approach not only a reactive approach when things are bad. So if you've used any of these before to help keep your tinnitus at ease, keep it at baseline and keep slow and steady improving, uh, I want to know in the chat. These are some of them that have worked for our, for our patients in our community. Stretching, yoga, meditation, guided breathing, going on walks, warm bath, and other calming activities. John is a patient who participated in a uh, podcast interview on my YouTube channel with me as well as everyone else we're going to feature tonight. And uh, John practiced meditation, guided breathing about three times a day, and it really helped him manage his tinnitus, okay? So when I thought of someone who's really used this strategy and had success with it, I thought of John. Strategy, <clears throat> strategy number two is to use sound therapy as a default. If you're new to sound therapy, then first you need to use it at all. But then you'll start to learn there's benefit, and I want to teach you, there's benefit of using it consistently as a default, not just something you put on your phone every now and then if you're having a loud day or a bad day, but something that you have on as a default until you reach stage four of habituation. I don't want you to take off your knee brace if you're in rehabilitation for a knee replacement when you're just 10 days into it, just because you're starting to feel good and you say, oh, I don't need it. I want you to use it until the doctors recommend you're all set. Similarly. As the tinnitus doctor, what we know, what the research has shown, keep working on the compounding effect of treatment until you're at stage four. And then once that's steady and consistent, we can take a step back from, from some of these approaches. Fortunately, having sound therapy as a default is quite simple. 
Here's two of our favorite ways to do that during the day. On the right here, you have a sound machine from Sound Oasis. This is a simple sound machine that you can use during the day. If you're working on a desk, you can have it on the desk. If you're at home, if you're in a quiet place, you can have this in your room. It does not need Bluetooth and you can have it on anytime you're in the room. Therefore, it's a default sound. It won't be interrupted by beeps and text messages. And it's always it can be always there, meaning default. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to think about why you're doing it because of your tinnitus. Now you're getting better because I'm habituating. It's just a default. Similarly, tinnitus maskers, devices that sit up and on the ears, they're medical devices that are designed for that purpose, where when you put them in your ears in the morning and you wear them during the day, they are the default sound therapy. Notice how this is subtle, but it's but it's important because tinnitus is so much related to attention and stress. So if my attention is on tinnitus more, then I'm going to hear my tinnitus more. Tinnitus will be louder. It will be more bothersome. If I don't think about tinnitus because I'm because I'm busy, I'm occupied, I'm with my friends and my family, I'm talking, or because there's sound around me. I'm walking outside, there's natural sound around me. I don't think about tinnitus as often. Well, you don't think about it as often because there's this natural distraction of sound around you. So that's what both of these can do as a default setting. And it may seem simple. It may seem like, mm, I don't know, that necessarily would work for me. It will. So please do this. Set sound therapy as your default. As audiologists, we know more than anyone the benefits of sound therapy as part of your tinnitus treatment plan. Very good. This slide is so important. I can't tell you how many people come to us and say sound therapy is the one thing that I couldn't have gotten better without. As I said earlier, there's been research in the last three years that has shown that after undergoing sound therapy treatment, brain activity in the relevant regions for tinnitus restored to normal levels compared to a control group. Meaning that this isn't just your attention changing for tinnitus. This is that when you reach stage four of habituation, those hyperactive regions of the brain are back to normal levels, which is the goal. So sound therapy is a big part of what can provide that. Common sounds that our community likes to use that our patients have the most success with, customized white noise, targeted pink noise, cricket sounds, which are popular on my YouTube channel, for example, natural running water sounds. Those can be played through both the sound machine as well as the devices in the ears, the tinnitus maskers. Notice how these do not plug your ear canals. So you're not, this is not AirPods or listening through headphones. These are medical devices that keep your ambient sound awareness open. That really helps habituation. All right. Martin is a real estate broker who says that he liked using the pink noise and the tinnitus maskers really helped out a lot. He's an example of someone who was struggling for many months and then decided to start the sound therapy treatment along with other strategies and using them consistently as a default, just having them on his ears, living his normal life, having some stress, being busy, but because they were always on his ears as a default, and he had the sound machine, then it was easy for him to have this sound therapy default setting. So strategy number three, to shift your attention and focus, which will increase neuroplasticity. Again, this is strategy number three, last strategy for what to do during the day here. Shifting your attention. We want to stimulate your five senses and create multi-sensory distraction. Now, distraction might have a negative connotation, but think of it this way. If there's a candle in a very dark room and there's no other lights around, all you can see is that candle. Your visual sense is hyper-focused on that candle. Now, for most of us, that, that won't matter because it's just a candle. But if the candle was right under this highly flammable drape in your house and you were tied to a chair, then you'd be very focused and, and very you know, emotionally on edge and going crazy about this. So tinnitus for many of us, is this wrapped in, in all this emotion and this and this difficulty of, of what it means to live with it. To hear it in a quiet place is as if we're seeing this dangerous candle in a dark room. So using auditory distractions, somatosensory physical touch distractions can help stimulate our other senses. So it's as if we're turning on the lights in the room that we're in. If we have, If there's a dimmer switch in the room, we're just turning on the lights in the room slowly increasing the dimmer switch so that the tinnitus becomes less noticeable. You can do that with podcasts, listening to podcasts, using sound therapy, different kinds of sound therapy. If you're having a bad day with tinnitus, we can touch on that. You can use moving your hands, having things to touch with your hands, taking walks, moving your body, doing stretching, taking a warm bath, using a stress ball. 
All of these things help shift your attention. Melinda is a credit officer who was able to uh, work with us and she shared her story on one of our podcast episodes as well. She really focused on this approach by shifting her attention during the day and not getting fixated on the tinnitus because she had other healthy inputs to shift her attention and positive distractions. She now, after doing the treatment, using the devices, working with us and doing these techniques, now there are days where she doesn't notice the tinnitus at all. Okay. So that's obviously what we're going for. That, it, that means she's either at stage four habituation or very close to it. Strategy number four, optimize. Now we're getting into the nighttime. So uh, let me know in the chat who here is really looking for help in the in the nighttime for sleep. We're going to focus on this for a bit of time, and then we're going to jump into the next section. So I see a few people raise their hands, which is great. I see yes, Ray, Carol, and others. So optimizing your sleeping position, room darkness, and temperature. I was looking into this. I was studying this a bit myself because this is all about optimizing. This Web class is about giving you the, the top tips that you might not find anywhere else. And we could all review the best practices for sleeping position, keeping your room dark, and the bedroom temperature. The most comfortable position is best, but for most of us, that means side sleeping with our heads slightly elevated. If you have a suspicion of neck, TMJ, jaw, physical posture related tinnitus, then being in a certain position might actually trigger your tinnitus to be louder. So speak with an expert like those on our team to make sure we're ruling that out. And then finding a comfortable position as stated here. In terms of the darkness, try to not have blue light screens before bed and complete darkness is ideal. The bedroom temperature, cooler is typically better. So having a cooler room using blankets is a good thing. An ideal range is 60 to 67 degrees. Now, if you're, if you're living in a warm place, don't don't fixate on this, but maybe just keep the air conditioner running. James was struggling a lot with sleep when his tinnitus was really bothering him for a matter of weeks and months. And then he found us, worked with us. We were able to track his progress over time. He's now able to sleep. And that was just crucial, just so important for him. And his story is just very, po very positive about how he learned the tools and was able to overcome the challenge. So if anyone's watched that podcast episode, you know. That's a that's really motivating story. Next strategy for the nighttime is using targeted sound therapy to help fall asleep or stay asleep. So I've given you a bit of a crash course in sound therapy earlier about how to use it during the day. Now we get to switch it to the nighttime. This is where it makes a big difference for those who are struggling with sleep, right? You know, sound therapy can be so key. So there's three things here I'm showing on the screen. One is in, in, the, in the far left here, we have a sleep headband. This is a a tinnitus sleep headband that provides sound therapy through small slim speakers alongside the ears. And you can put your ear on the pillow, but still hear sound therapy without having to use an earbud. It's very comfortable and surprisingly helpful for so many patients. All right. The second piece here is in the middle. This is a sound machine that I spoke about earlier. This is the same one that you can use during the day as well as at night. So keeping this, keeping this by your bedside table can be so huge. This can play sounds like crickets or natural water running or white noise or pink noise. And this can play on the left, this can play any Bluetooth sound as well. On the far right here, we have a sound pillow. So this is another option for those who are looking to optimize and try different things where there's actual small speakers inside of the pillow and there's sounds that are designed for tinnitus that come through the pillow. It's okay to fully mask tinnitus at night. This is this is an important question because earlier, just you know. 15 minutes ago, I said, don't fully cover your tinnitus with sound therapy. So you might see this and think, why is that different? Habituation is a process that occurs during the day, right? I've spoken with my mentor about this, Dr. Jasterboff, founder of Tinnitus Retraining Therapy. The sound therapy, the retraining, and what the research showed, that was people using it during the day. What happens at night, you can fully mask your tinnitus with sound therapy, or if you can sleep in silence, you could sleep in silence. When you're actually asleep, when you're in that subconscious state, it doesn't matter if there's sound therapy coming in or not. But we use sound therapy to help us fall asleep and to help us stay asleep. So in that case, you can fully mask your tinnitus if it helps you achieve those goals. Popular sounds, white noise, pink noise, natu nature sounds, running water, crickets, like I spoke about before. If you're next to a spouse, put a thumbs up. If you're sleeping next to a spouse who has an opinion about your sound therapy use, or maybe you think that they might have an opinion about using sounds next to you, you're not alone in that. And there's strategies for, you know, all we have to do is buy them some nice $30 earplugs that are comfortable and sleek and 
they can block out a lot of those sounds that you need to hear so that they don't need to hear it because to you it's relieving and soothing to them it might be annoying but simply earplugs can make a big difference randy as i spoke about earlier randy's story was he was really struggling with sleep and you know i asked him what was it about the sleep was it ruminating on the thoughts or was it the tin or was it the sound of tinnitus he said well it's the constant loud sound of tinnitus right the sound itself is what keeps us up even if we aren't anxious or stressed the sound itself can keep us up. So now after going through the treatment, after working with our team, one of our doctors on our team, Randy says that he's been sleeping through the night with sound therapy helping him. He used the tinnitus maskers during the day, but at night he used the different options that I laid out here. And the combination of all these was important for him, but specifically for the nighttime, these devices were a big piece of it. We're going to share some options for where to find those kinds of devices. So hang out here with us for a moment. Strategy number six, listen to guided sleep audio to fall asleep faster. With this, you can access the benefits of progressive muscle relaxation, right? Starting at the head, moving your way down, relaxing the muscles in the body. They tell our brain that we're calm, we're at ease. It sends the signal that it's time to relax and fall asleep. I did this myself a few nights ago as I was having anxiety. I was up late at night. It was hard for me to fall asleep. So I put on my favorite guided sleep audio uh, collection of tracks, which is a YouTube channel called The Honest Guys. It's these two British guys, and they, they have soothing guided sleep audio that you just listen to, and it helps you slowly calm yourself and fall asleep. So there's different ways to listen to it. But it's okay in this case to use headphones or earbuds uh, to go from your phone. You could even use this kind of sleep headband if you connected it to your phone. And you can play these for 30 minutes or two hours. You can find different guided sleep audio that works for you. There's also Yoga Nidra is another form of this. And you can listen to those types of videos. So this is really helpful. This is an expert tip where I don't, I don't think many of you have tried this and I'm seeing in the chat, a lot of you are new to it. So I'd really like for you to try this out if you're struggling with sleep. And let's read Patty's quick quote here about her experience. We've covered three strategies for sleep during the night, falling asleep, staying asleep. Before that, we covered the three strategies for during the day. And as Patty has shown that this method helped her. So all right, everyone, that was great. So our goal, and I believe our shared goal, if you're watching this, is to help you get relief from tinnitus as quickly as possible. Over 69% of patients following those six strategies that you've learned about tonight improve significantly in less than three months. And many start to see benefit in the first few weeks of getting relief. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Head over to tinnitusquiz.com to find which solution is right for you. My name is Dr. Ben. Check above for another web class video we did, which I think you'll enjoy.